So I've got a rally here with um, two guys on the court, and they're quite capable players, so they're really quite accomplished. And I'm putting a little dot on the screen on their foot, which is showing me how close they get to the side wall when they strike every single shot. Um, and the whole plan of this is to understand just how much of the court you really need to cover, how much um, space you can um, not have to not worry about. But understand that the court's really not as big as you think it is. In other words, the running area on the court is not as big as, as what you think it is. So you see it's um, a quite intense game. Some rallies from really long, and these guys are relatively shot players. Well, the one in the blue is definitely a shot player. He's trying to push the ball around and make the ball make the court big. So it's not like I've just picked two guys that are just going to rally down the back, and it's all pretty simple, and there's no movement up the front. So there's reasonable court coverage everywhere, and we've got a pretty solid um, outcome from um, a whole five minutes worth of squash. So, and the outcome come is just about to happen with the finished last rally there. Okay, so what happens is we've got a court, and the court is 9.75 long and 6.4 wide. Now I'll put a few lines on the screen which you can see, and that pretty much shows you where you don't have to reach. Okay, so you don't you don't have to step, so you don't have to run inside that area. Now, the ones at the back are a little bit funny because of the um, parallax error, where we're at an angle, we're looking at the corner at an angle. So there's probably another, like almost half a metre there that you don't have to get back into the uh, to the back court. And it makes it look like the ones at the front court are a little bit further up the front and everything as well. But um, I tried to pick the feet, so that should be pretty good. So we look at the human body, and we put that in. I understand the human body has a reach of about um, 0.7 of a metre. And then your racket is another 0.6. So that makes it at 1.3. So it's 1.3 metres there. way of saying that I've gone with um, a dimension that roughly, I'll just pick it out in mid-air, but anyway, 0.8 and 0.6. And the reason that just makes it a nice um, rounded off to a nice number, 1.4 off. Um, because it works out roughly around about there, it's 1.3, which is about right as far as where you didn't have to get into. Not too many shots are actually on the wall, and if they are, then you've really got to reach out a little bit further. Human reach, it's average human reach. So when you reach and stretch over and go over your front leg, then you can probably pick up another 300 mil or some, somewhere there. And so um, it's not bad numbers that I've kind of chosen for um, what we've got going on. So that it's pretty reasonable. So we take a look at this. Um, that drops our court area, our surface area where we have to cover down. So it cut, drops it down dramatically. So we were saying that gone from gone from 9.75 and it drops it back to 8 meters, and 6.4 wide drops back to 5 meters wide. So let's put that in perspective. So from the T, you've got two and a half meters that way. You've got two and a half meters that way and then you've got four meters this way and more than roughly four meters that way now you're going to start from an area which is not in the T so generally you'll start from back here because the line that the cut line or sorry the service line is not in the middle of the court anyway so that'll be about the mid-range area of where you have to run and everything as well which is where all the courts are worn out on the red lines on the floor and everything as well so the purpose of this whole video was to explain that the court is not as big as it looks. You don't have to cover the whole court. Um, there is one or two flyers in here, as in, when I say one or two flyers, uh, this one over here, that was a winning shot. And that just um, looked like it wasn't returned. And that's, and that's where the guy was. He sort of overstumbled and had extra um, stepped in there as well and he didn't get the ball back. But if I put the second bounce in there, for winning shots. This is the second bounce for winning shots and all those shots that were not returned. They're all the blue ones. Once again, and you see it's quite interesting to even see where all the winners were in that game. So the um, the winners over here, they were, um, a, a lot of them were boasts. They, they, they held the shot and pushed the ball across and so the second bounce was over there with a few drop shots. But see even drop shots, they're all really quite deep so they're not right up here. They're not up in the front corner. Um, as in the winners, and these are drop shot winners and so on as well, and they're not, and there's a few cross-court boasts and stuff.
but they're not right up in that front corner. So it really is 1.25 metres is very, very true. I would suggest that it's a pretty good a number to say that you don't have to go within 1.25 metres of the front wall. So that's pretty big. That's a pretty big area. I know you, you, your racket goes in there, but you don't have to go in there. So you only have to go four metres. Now we took four metres this way um, from our pseudo T, which we back here. Um, then you're talking three steps. You have a stride. You can stride out um, over a metre. That's three steps. And that's where um, that's three steps and a reach by the way. And you've got to stop and you've got to balance. And so it's not as simple as what I make it out. So it, it is there. And yes, you're going diagonals as well from those points. And yes, you're going diagonals out there. So all those diagonals, I'd still suggest you can do it in three steps without any trouble at all from that centre point. Simply because um, it's it's just a... Um, a large, you can even leap in the air if you need to, but, um, and players do, they don't spend time with one foot on the ground at all times. Um, they can do it sometimes, depending on um, how much stress they're under and so on. It also matters how high the ball is, so when that'll affect, that'll affect reach and everything as well, so you'll get a little bit closer to the side wall when you're bowling. But once again, you're not running when you have to do that, and you've got generally a lot more time to um, come off that situation or that, that spot. So at the back, you've very much got a lot more time. You tend to go and drive those up if you can and lift them up and so on. So the ones at the back are um, pretty reasonable. But anyway, so we're talking three steps. So you need to work on one, two, three steps. One, two, three steps and so on. If you can do your three steps, especially at the front of the court, the back of the court becomes a little bit more different with um, some forms of shuffle movements and so on as well. Um, then it, it really makes a difference. But it's more or less this video is all about to get in your mind that the court is really small. The court's not massively big. It's actually a small area that you need to cover. Eight metres or four metres forward, four metres back, and two and a half metres sideways each side. So it's not a massive area. It's not a massive spend all your time running around from point to point. So you don't run from corner to corner. And um, it really makes a bit of difference and hopefully mentally it means that you can look and see that the court's really small instead of looking and seeing the court is really big. So when you have a look at how big the court is, have a look at how big it is from the tee or from the middle of the court. And you go, well, it's not very far. And it's not very far. So get back to the tee is one of the most important things, obviously, that you'll learn because it, it cuts down the amount of distance. And the tee generally be around about there. Um, it cuts down the distance you have to go for each shot. So um, if you're in trouble, lift it up so you can get back to that team, which reduces the amount of distance you have to travel for the next one. So you go, oh, just thought you'd find this interesting, so I just put it all together. And um, the other thing that I'll take home from this one is that you see where all the winners were. All the winners were short, but it's probably these deep ones that set up the short ones. And so while the winners were there and the winners were there, there's one or two lob winners, then one poor shot that was a poor, then one poor shot that was a poor shot the guy just didn't execute. Um, but one lob winner and the rest of them, this one was a poor shot, it wasn't executed at all. Those two were both volleys that um, hit the tin when they went for too much. But these ones were um, all outright winners, some of these, and some of these were outright winners with either boasts or the short volley because they dragged them down the back first opened up the front and then put in the short volley winner. Get really good in this area. So get really good in covering this area. This one's much easier because you've got the big reach and um, you've got your forehand on that side, so you've got options, but this one becomes more difficult with your lunge and your reach because the, your arm is on the other side for the backhand side. When you um, stretch forward, it then um, makes it really difficult. You've just got to really lunge and get your prep in and everything as well. So. Do a lot of work in this area to get really strong and fast and you can also see the amount of shots that are all the way through here so you should you've got you should spend a bit more time on the backhand side with movement than inside because um forehand side people are so dynamic they keep it away from there and that's why it's all there so get really really good at this get really 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 good at this and then so that should be the order and then get this one and then get that one and then you'll get really good with your court movement. There you go, the court's really small. It's really only eight metres by about five metres if you take into consideration the reach of a human being. So such a small area to cover, everybody should be super fast.